Concern over gun violence is growing, and a recent study says the majority of Canadians in urban centres believe in a gun ban. But did you know that your own investments could be part of supplying guns? Canadians have more than a trillion dollars in investment funds, including stocks in several high-profile gun manufacturers. With more on investing, I'm joined by financial planner Tim Nash. Good to have you with us. Thanks so much for having me. I want to get your response to some of these statistics and sure. what's out there. According to a recent report from Ecos Research, 69% of Canadians, as we've mentioned, think there should be a strict ban on guns. 33% of Canadian households invest in mutual funds. How likely is it that the majority of these funds include stock in gun manufacturers? Right. So this is an issue that I think concerns a lot of Canadians, mm -hmm. especially right now. Uh, and when it comes to mutual funds, they're not very transparent. So it's hard for me to know exactly what's inside. Those holdings tend to change from time to time. Mm -hmm. That said, the vast majority of mutual funds in Canada could include gun manufacturers at any given time. Really, if we look at funds that don't include those, they need to have some type of socially responsible label on them mm -hmm. um, to ensure that there aren't guns inside. Otherwise, absent of that label, there's a pretty good probability that if they don't have guns right now, they could have guns at some point in the future. And as a client, you can phone up and ask and say, do we, do, is this part of my portfolio? Absolutely. And now again, they, the, they might have uh, some problems with that question because the holdings change all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to exchange traded funds, ETFs, which are increasingly becoming very popular, those, I can verify, most of them do include guns. Because they have uh, such a wide variety of listings, they're much more diversified. Oftentimes, you know, and those are very easy to go online to check to be able to see whether those companies are inside. Tim, if this is an issue for you, if you don't want to see yeah. your money supporting something like this, what can you do? Can you ask to have that flagged on your file? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you certainly should have a conversation with your investment advisor about this issue. All right. That's one element of how responsibility works. But it's part of this bigger trend of responsible investing. Absolutely. And so responsible investing is a, a massively growing trend. So many Canadians are shifting their assets in this direction. Most financial institutions do offer a socially responsible investment product. Mm -hmm. So it might be as simple as simply switching, calling up and switching. I mean, RBC has responsible investments. Well, Simple now has a responsible investment. And certainly the credit unions across Canada, if that's who you do, you do your banking with, then almost certainly they will have options. So for a lot of Canadians, it's really just simply having that conversation, asking that question, and seeing whether there is a socially responsible investment option available for you. Globally, let's give an indication of what things look like. Around 24% of all exchange traded funds, 15% of all mutual funds, include at least one public company involved in the firearms industry. So if you already have money in mutual funds, you aren't sure which are the exact companies. Like we said, you want to be, in your version, more socially responsible. You have to talk to your investors. Ask questions and yeah. ask tough questions. Sometimes it can get a little bit awkward, you know, having these conversations with your advisor. Uh, they're, they, they get a little sticky sometimes. So really, in my mind, it's about asking those difficult conversations and remembering that it's your money, mm -hmm. and this is an opportunity for you to vote with your dollars. It's so interesting. People will advocate for their own health, but they won't right. advocate for their money. Right. Absolutely. It's fascinating. I think we kind of like to keep our head in the sand a little bit when it comes to our investments. Um, but when these issues pop up, and you know, for so many people, there are so many different sort of ethical values-based issues that pop up, it's really important to understand that we can have an impact with our investment dollars. Is there pushback that you can give as a client if you're speaking to your investor, you're asking those hard questions, it's an awkward right. conversation as it might be, you know, and they'll say, you know, that's really difficult for us to do, or we yeah. can't, you know, sort of, we can't um, micromanage every single sure. file. What, what is my, as a client, what are my rights? What can I push back I on? I mean, it's your money. So at the end of the day, you have the option to walk away and find an advisor that will work with you. My preference is actually to shift your money into online investments. Uh, by buying uh, your own investments online, you have complete control over what you buy. So really, this is a matter of agency for people that are looking to actually have an impact on this issue and do something. I think so many of us feel helpless on this issue. This is a, a way for people to actually have a positive impact. And there's no real need to sacrifice financial returns. You can actually make more money by investing in a socially responsible manner. A lot to think about this morning. Tim, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me.